Surprise everybody, if you've read the title of this video, you probably realize that we are back in Greece. And if you've been following along, it probably looks to you like we came directly from Brazil. We actually took some time off. We yes. had some time at home over the summer in Canada. We relaxed a little bit. We got some work done, but now we're ready to vlog again. So this time around we're actually in a totally different part of Greece. We're in Greek Macedonia, which is northern Greece in a city called Thessaloniki. It happens to be the second biggest city here in Greece. And we're starting things off at this old fortress. It's also a prison. I'm going to butcher the name. It's called something like Heptap... Heptap... Hep Heptap... <laughs> We're going to be bad at this. So one thing about this place is there's not a lot of signage. Um, when there is signage, it's all in Greek. So there's no English. We don't exactly know where we're going as per the norm. Yeah, and we walked like uh, 40 minutes to get up here yeah. uphill through like weird windy streets with not much signage like Trevor said. And Google Maps wasn't very helpful. Once mm -hmm. in a while, I would go down like an alleyway and it'd be a dead end. So yeah, it was interesting getting up here. You might want to take a taxi. <laughs> Still kind of lost, huh? <laughs> I found this little miniature version. Uh, so I think we're here at this door and we can go through. So might as well go through. So we finally made it inside. You can see Anna back here trying to look up some facts on this place. What's interesting is the different architectural styles in here. You can see the prison and all this barbed wire right next to the old city walls. And right over this way, where we just walked through, you can see all these vines over the pathway. So I found some facts for you. This fortress actually dates back over a thousand years. It's really, really, really old. Uh, it's from the Byzantine era. And um, the name of it, which I won't try to say again, actually translates to Fortress of Seven Towers, which is kind of strange because there are 10 towers. Well, these are uh, quite the steep steps. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we made it up on top of the wall, and this by far is the best view yet. It's absolutely stunning up here. Also, what you can see is the prison area, and you kind of get the sense of how this would all work, huh? Yeah, so there was a prison more recently. Um, as I said, this dates back a thousand years, but it was more so like in the last hundred years it was a right. prison in the 1930s. I think that was during the uh, Greek fascist regime. They had a political prisoners here, and then during the Nazi occupation, they also used it as a prison. And I think soon after that, it closed down, and then in the 1980s, they began restoring it. So being a Greek city, there is loads and loads and loads of history here. Uh, it was part of the Roman Empire, the uh, Byzantine era of the Ottoman Empire so there are loads of different ruins from different eras all over the place you can see like big pillars and like really really cool So not too far from the fortress is this place that we are standing in now called Pasha's Gardens. It looks to be a bunch of old ruins. They look like old ruins, but in the scheme of things, they're actually not that old. I read that they're from 1904, but the funny thing is nobody knows where they came from or who built them. These are pretty odd looking ruins. <laughs> like, I don't, was this a structure, do you think? I don't know. Do you think it's a sculpture or a structure? Yeah, it almost looks like it was supposed to be a sculpture and then they just gave up at some point, but it's really interesting stuff. So if you happen to be new to the channel, I am Trevor and this is Anna. We are the delightful travelers. We are happy you are here. Now, we have some facts for you about Thessaloniki. So it is located in northern Greece and there is 1.1 million people here. And as we said before, it is the second biggest city in all of Greece. It also dates back to 315 BC. Wow. It was founded, I think, by a guy named Cassandro. Is that what I said his name is? Something like that. And he named it after his wife, who happened to be called Thessaloniki. She was, I think, the half-sister of Alexander the Great. Well, that sounds really important, but I'll tell you what's even more important. We have a drink we want to try. We've waited about a year to try them. Fredo Cappuccinos. As we 
said before, as you're walking around here, you just come across like some really cool architectural historical monuments. This is the, the Arch of Galerius. It is one of the most popular historical monuments in the whole city. The Arch, arch was commissioned as a triumphal monument by Emperor Galerius, which is a named after, in order to celebrate the victorious campaign against the Sassanid Persians in 298 AD. So back to the task at hand, we uh, got distracted by old ancient ruins and now we're looking for that Fredo Cappuccino. What do you think of this place? It looks cute. So since we're waiting here for our Fredo Cappuccinos, it's probably a good time to talk about languages. So the Greek language is beyond tricky for North Americans and probably a lot of other countries as well. Um, we, we do try to learn uh, some phrases and words wherever we go. So we know yeses is hello, a thank you, is the hard one, I think it's F R stone, but it's faster, so like F R stone. I've been remembering by like the letter F R and stone, but just don't say stone, so F R stone. F R stone? I think maybe? <laughs> no, 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 no. F R stone. No, I think it's F R stone. <laughs> someone tell, uh, tell us in the comments below who is more correct, Trevor or me? Um, that being said, I find we find most people generally speak English, especially at restaurants and things. We haven't had any issues whatsoever. You guys have no clue how excited we are to have these back in our lives. For some reason, you can't seem to get them outside of, I mean, maybe you can get them outside of Greece, but not really outside of this region. I think they're like a Mediterranean thing. And I don't know why, because they're basically just espresso on the bottom and it's cold. And then they like do a froth frothy milk, and someone says low fat, I'm not sure if that's true, but frothy milk on the top. And that's basically it, and you kind of stir it together and get it with sugar or without, and it's so good. I'm so excited right now. I'm gonna have to try just the frothy part first. Mmm. It's so like smooth and fluffy. <laughs> it's the best word I can think for it. And then of course at the bottom, it's um, up where it's all coffee is, and that's really, really strong and bitter. Actually, this one's a little bit more bitter than some other ones have, but of course, once you start to mix it around, it all just blends and goes together, and it just makes for such, such a great, great coffee. So now we have come down to the main square. It's called Aristoteles, I believe. Aristoteles, I think is how you pronounce All it. All the pronunciation's a little <laughs> tricky for us. But what a city so far. We were just talking about that, how much we love it. It's really young. There's a big university here. I think that helps. Yeah, is, it feels really young and vibrant. Yeah, and trendy, very trendy, yeah, kind of hip. Cool spot. Lots of shops. Just really easy to walk around. It's just, it's very pleasant to be here. Yeah, so this, as Trevor said, is the main square of the city. Uh, it was actually designed by a French architect in 1980 but most of the construction was done in the 1950s. And I, I mean, I know that sounds really, really new. I did read that new. there was a really huge fire in the city in 1917 that destroyed a lot of it. So I'm guessing that's why a lot of the stuff is new here. Yeah, that would explain a lot because the buildings here seem a lot newer than some of the other buildings we've seen throughout the day. We always say something we love about cities like this here in Europe is that it's such an outdoor culture. I know it's 32 degrees today, so it kind of makes sense, but it's like everybody's sitting on the patios, even probably when it's cold, they're probably sitting on the patios, having a coffee, having a smoke. <laughs> so many people smoke here. We always say that the smoking culture and the tobacco companies are thriving Arriving over here they in Europe. Are. Everybody smokes. So we found the waterfront. It's really awesome, but now we have to run for our lives. There is a pirate ship coming to get us. We're in trouble now. Arr, it's the greasy pirates. You see what I did there? Greasy grease pirates. You know what I'm saying. So this is a really cool strip. We did not realize by looking at Google Maps, which is what we were doing, that there was this long kind of boardwalk down you, here. Yeah, when you look on maps, you can see the road, but it doesn't really show you this. So we weren't no. sure if you could like run or walk or bike, but you can do all of those things down here. Yeah, it's so cool to see everyone out walking. There's people on scooters, skateboards, bikes, and at the end, there's this really big tower we're gonna try to go to. So we just made it down to the White Tower, which is probably the most recognizable thing here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I think we're going to go in depending on the price. So let's find out what it is. So it was four euro per person to go up to um, the top. I think there might have been a museum too, but we're skipping that. So they also said um, photos are allowed, but no personnel. I think that means don't take pictures of people. Hopefully that didn't mean video.
the views up here are stunning. I can't believe it's just four euros to come up here and you get to see all this. We're here close to golden hour, so yeah, the city. The sunset would be pretty crazy oh, too. Yeah. Just lit up. It's so beautiful up here. What a view. And you can see where we were this morning at the fort. Yeah, it's a good way to, place to end this because you can see where we started and yeah, all the way so down here incredible. now. Incredible. We're loving this place. <laughs> We are back down on the ground again. You may have noticed from watching that that it was actually really easy to walk up. We've done a lot of towers in our lives and usually they're like really steep and old, but this was a uh, fairly easy, but they spread out steps. A little bit of history about it. It I think it was built in the 15th century. Uh, it was replaced an older fortress on the same grounds. At the time it was used for a prison. So they called it the Red Tower or the Tower of Blood. Ugh. But then they whitewashed it in 1891 and it became the White Tower. <laughs> Well guys, that wraps up this week's video and I cannot stress enough for the both of us, we are so happy to be back in Greece. Here's a fun fact, our Greece playlist from last year is our most watched playlist on the channel. I think that's pretty cool. It is, and if you happen to be from Greece and picked us up, you know, last time we were here and have watched it, continuously watched us since then, mm -hmm. thanks so much and you should leave a comment and let us know if you have hung around all that time. Yeah, definitely. You're in for a treat. <laughs> and well, if you're gonna leave a comment, you should also like the video, that really helps us out. You might as well hit the subscribe button as well because there are going to be so many more Greek videos coming out very soon. Now, what did we do in the last video? Because I am We lost. were in Brazil, <clears throat> Sao right. Paulo, exploring the city. Yes, and next week. Next week? We're gonna be eating some Greek food. Maybe even some street Greek food, but we'll see about that. But we're just so excited to be back here. We're so excited. Alright guys, that's it. From Thessaloniki, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon. Oh,